progression of that further. And you have um, uh, Mary just explained the, the Jarvis family over one part plot, but the people on the turn plot right to the east of them are the Allen family. And the Allens did something quite a bit different. Uh, they built, basically built, um, actually, do you have any interest in their part? So this is their part plot, very thin piece of land. And what they did is they built uh, two big estates, one on the south end, um, called Moss Park, that was their family home, um, and one at the north end called Homeland, that was the son's family home. And today, even uh, Wells Bay kind of parks around a little bit, it's just so it could, could go around the front yard of Homeland. And in the middle, they built a horticultural garden. And the purpose of that was similar to what, what uh, Manhattan did with um, uh, uh, Central Park. You build a garden, and that will bring people to the area. So they built the garden as a way to attract uh, potential development. And just, so it's funny when people, um, interesting about our, our uh, cities is that people get fixed in their mind that what, what's here right now is exactly what's always been here and what's, what the potential is. Well, the potential of, of uh, kind of bringing back some of the wonderful images that uh, the Allen family had in their park lot is quite interesting. So they had, um, this, was, this was Moss Park, um, that's from Queen Street, uh, fantastic estate. Um, Homewood to the north was the first house to have electricity in Toronto. Um, they were, uh, they founded uh, pretty much the collection that now is the Royal Ontario Museum. Uh, a very uh, cultured and educated family, and they thought building a park uh, for the people of Toronto was a very important thing to do. So this you've seen images of Jarvis. I think there's a bicycle there. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit to actually talk about 
a temporary art installation that would occur on an annual basis um, in our gardens. Um, and the purpose of that would be many, many ways partly to bring more attention to the gardens, to bring uh, attention to the need for more funding to help uh, the garden rejuvenate itself, to bring a larger community of people there who might actually be interested in a variety of things that might happen. Also to bring attention to um, uh, to Jarvis Street and a kind of simple relationship between a major park that we have in Alba, a major resource, and a fantastic street, uh, and how those two things interact. And so um, here's the spot we're looking at. Uh, so that's right behind. It's, it sort of seems because the park is never designed with that piece there. It's just simply where the school had been and where it's said the demolition occurred. There's no design element there. You're actually kind of in the back of the of uh, the palm house. Uh, we think there's quite a large area where uh, quite a bit of work can happen, quite a few interesting things can happen without any tree damage trees or anything like that. Uh, the, uh, we are looking at uh, walking this forward and saying, well, how would uh, artists, architects, landscape architects, uh, community people put forward a proposal to design something? It may be everything from uh, a better sidewalk on Jarvis uh, to a formal entry to a pavilion 